Perhaps you can start by telling us something about the inner ring road and the reasons for its construction. Well, I'm not sure wh whether there were any plans for it before the war, but certainly the, the war made it a possibility that whilst the buildings were still falling down and uh, pieces were being picked up, the city fathers very progressively started to replan <coughs> the city centre and part of that plan was to replace the old city wall with, with, with a, a, an inner ring road which would be a, a defensive uh, mechanism for the city centre and keep the traffic out, it, it mm. would bypass the city centre. Now, the ring road then and the ring road now are totally different creatures. The plans that they drew up in 1946, and, and, and we saw the first uh, length of it built in, I think it was about 1959, was o over where the uh, police station is in, in Little Park Street, between there and Rolls Royce. It was dual carriageways with the normal two lanes, uh, a cycle track, and then, and then footpaths outside it, and either roundabouts or, in, in that case, traffic lights. Now, by the time we'd finished design it in, in 74, you can see what we've got now, it, it's dual three lane, flyovers and, and underpasses. The, the big change it came as a, as a result of work in the 60s, the very early 60s. The council, again very forward looking at the time, carried out transportation study work, which, which in, in those days uh, you did with pencil and paper rather than with computers. But in the early 60s uh, they were fortunate enough to find a, an IBM computer program which would help to do a lot of, of the calculation work. And it was in the, the early 60s that not only was the inner ring road completely redesigned, replanned with the great separated junctions, but a totally different road pattern for the rest of the city. That, that, that up till then uh, there was the typical traditional engineering approach of ring and spoke, and, and there was to be an inner ring road, an intermediate ring road, an outer ring road, and the roads that we now, that we still know today, Radford Road, Fozer Road, the Bud Spur outside here, and so on, uh, would all be jewelled uh, as, as the spokes of the, the wheel. <coughs> Now, the studies of the early 60s found that that is what people wanted to do with, with their, this new thing they were, they were acquiring in, in great numbers, the motor car. And the studies showed that that sort of pattern wasn't where people wanted to go. It didn't carry uh, sufficient of them. The, the car really was booming and predicted to, to boom in, in the 60s and a whole radical look at, at the pattern of demand w w was, was done. Now you know there's the, the, the city, uh, I think again uh, as a consequence of the war, doesn't have the normal uh, amount of jobs in the central area, where, where a, a, a traditional city has, has most of its employment in the central area. Coventry, I think partly because of, of the war and the shadow factory effect, has got chunks of uh, industry like Jaguar up at Brown's Lane, mm -hmm. the whole of the Foles Hill area railway triangle, or, or it had in those days, it's, it hasn't now, and a great wedge of employment out uh, Torrington Avenue area. So that the travel demands in the city were, were not around and, and in and out, they were very much cross city, and a plan was developed that would have a north-south road and an east-west road linking the industry of Torrington Avenue, Charter Avenue area to the industry of Foles Hill, to the residences of Walsgrave, uh, linking the industry of Foles Hill to the city centre and southwards uh, and continuing out to Kenilworth, which we, we have got the Kenilworth bypass, and continuing northwards to Nanit, and, and we have got the Bedworth bypass. We talk about what was destroyed when the uh, road was built, do you know? What was destroyed? Yes. Uh, the ring road is probably of a smaller diameter and with more junctions th th than, than we would design today. But uh, in defence of, of the people who designed it that way, it went through very soft land. It went through what was called in Coventry slums uh, or, or um, 
old properties. There was a button factory, wasn't there? I think it was demolished for one thing. I, I Only one in Britain. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know there was some old, some of the old cycle factories. But uh, uh, to me, um, I, I came to Coventry in '63, and the Moat Street flyover was being built, and that was going through. Um, the name implies Moat Street, which was supposedly slums. And compared to what I'd read of and heard of of, of slums in, in other British cities, I, I never thought Coventry had any slums. Yeah. Uh, th th these were you know, working class areas, but they weren't, they weren't what I believed slums to be. Yeah. Um, no, I still don't think Coventry's got any slums. But uh, it went through the particular little area where the land w w would have least devastating effect, because if, if you think of the root of it, uh, if it was, was that little bit um, further out, it, uh, it would affect a lot of properties. I think it's only the, the, the Moat Street area, the um, mm -hmm. is it Ringway Queens it's called, oh, yeah, I I, I maybe it's no, no. Moat Street Flyer is a term you, you don't understand, yeah. it's, it's the one uh, at the Butch Roundabout, and that's the only area where some comprehensive development was carried out, the, the whole of the, the flats and the housing from... Uh, is this, this Starley Road? No, no, this side, th this side of the oh. Green Road, from yeah. the Butts Roundabout out to uh, Windsor Street, yeah. where the, the Fogwatch pub is, all, all that, all, that, oh, yeah, all those flats on the right, yeah. yeah, opposite the tech. They were all, um, that area was developed as, as a result of the demolition that was associated with the Ring Road, yeah. and it won design awards in its time. For, yeah. for the for the comprehensive redevelopment, which was 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 Coventry's policy that, that if it could, it would comprehensively redevelop an area rather than just belt a road through it. Yeah. But uh, el elsewhere, if the road had been any further out, it, it would have knocked down um, more substantial property or knocked down uh, industrial premises. And I think the other thing that we might not have done now was to c connect every existing road in, uh, bar. Yeah. What, Hill Street, I think, is about the only one that, that doesn't connect into the inner ring road, and, and there's a subway underneath it. Sponge, it. Uh, is it uh, Sorry, Spot. Ho Hollyhead Spot. Road doesn't connect. Hollyhead, well, it does out on the outer side, doesn't it? Oh, it it's okay. closed on the inside, but it does on the outside. Do, do you think it's, um, it's um, achieved what it set out to do, the ring road? I just lost the light. I think, yes, I think it's been, it's been very successful. We monitored the effect of it stage by stage. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's this is the final stage was, was called stage six, which actually replaced stage one. So there's really only five stages of it. But every time a section was opened, we had a tremendous reduction in, in traffic in the city centre and a tremendous improvement in accident rate as well. That, 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 uh, mm -hmm. that, that's as significant uh, as the reduction in traffic flow was the, the, the number of lives that the ring road has saved. What about the effect it's had of making the city centre virtually dead on Sundays at Rafter? I don't think that's got anything to do with, 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 with the, ring, the ring road itself. Uh, I think it's a matter of what's in the city centre, whether it's attractive enough for people. Mm. Uh, and is it dead on Sundays? They well, fairly, yes. Well, well, certainly the, the area around the, the cathedral is it's quite right, busy. Yeah. Uh, when there are events on, like the half marathon last weekend, and the that um, what do they call them? Custom cars, was it? Yes, that's right. Or cherished cars, or whatever. Yeah. All those highly polished things. Uh, there was those people around. Mm. The, the outer ring road had the effect of causing a lot of planning blight when it was um, originally mooted, didn't it? Well, not not so much the outer ring road. It, uh, the the east-west road did, uh, which was a road, uh, as I said, from... Um, That's the one going through the Falzer Road, would it? Well, it, it tr well, crossed, crossed from Charter Avenue, and it, and it crossed uh, Hurstle Common. It came, it came along, along the railway, alongside the main line, south, south of the railway line, and then it, it crossed um, the railway line near the old Standard Works, mm -hmm. British Lowland and across Hursle Common, and then charged across uh, Mosley Avenue, crossed Four Pounds Avenue, heading, heading roughly for Cash's Lane and Foles Hill Road, mm -hmm. and that 
knock down a fair number of properties on route. Well, that that is uh, and new and and fairly good properties, fairly modern properties. That has now been abandoned. The the, the city council abandoned that uh, even before the county council took over the mm. responsibility for highways. Uh, can we talk about the 1947 planning act? Perhaps do you know. That, that was the one you mentioned that had a great deal of effect on the city. Yes, I, 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 I wonder whether the 47 Planning Act was produced as a result of the need for the country to put itself together after the war, or whether it would have appeared sometime in the 40s anyway, because it was just a natural evolution of planning. That, that, that at that time, planning um, became a separate uh, science, a separate discipline, that into, until then it had generally been done by engineers or architects. Uh, and in Coventry the, um, the city engineer was a planner as well. Uh, and yeah, I think it was in the early 50s when the role was switched from the city engineer Ernie Ford to Sir Donald Gibson, mm -hmm. possibly because of his uh, greater vision uh, that the, the old city the engineer then would have had uh, traffic going up and down the precinct, whereas uh, Sir Donald Gibson had the plan in mind that, uh, that we've achieved. Mm. But back to, back to the 47 Act, it, 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 so whether it would have come with evolution anyway, whether the war uh, caused it or not, uh, it required planning authorities to produce development plans, and the city immediately set about its. It had already um, had the plans for the central area, the city centre, underway since the middle of the war, so that come 47-48 they then extended the, the planning to look at the whole, of the, the whole of the city and in 1951 finally produced the development plan that was submitted to the then Minister of Housing and Local Government. Now as well as, as the inner ring road which, which say, has always been on the, on the plans uh, there was this proposed uh, spoke and, and rim effect mm. of the intermediate ring road, the outer ring road, and, and all the radial routes improved. It took the minister six years to, to look at, consider and approve the plan, and it, it became the, the city's 1957 development plan. And one of the requirements of the 47 Act was, was a quinquennial review, so that uh, a 51 submission should really have been reviewed in 56, but the, the submission hadn't even been approved by then. Yeah. And the, the City Council set about its supposedly five-year review, but it was then, in about 1960, it, it, it set up the transportation study work to, to look at the, the whole plan again. And it took until 1966 to produce the plan. Now, they started uh, thinking that the 57 road plan would still work. Uh, they found fairly quickly once they were doing their surveys that, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't carry the traffic. And they therefore started devising the, the road pattern that would, which would, that would carry the traffic up, up to, uh, then looking at a 20-year horizon, so they were talking about uh, traffic predictions up till 1981. And they found that the pattern that would carry the traffic wouldn't have many citizens left to drive around the road because it would knock all the houses down. It, it, was, it, it, it needed more tarmac than, yeah. than, than houses to, to, to carry all the traffic. So um, after a, a, a lot of considered thought and modification and modification of the plan, they came up with a, a balanced package that would carry the off-peak traffic flow because that was uh, the more important, that the, the stuff flowing around outside the peak is, is, is bread and butter, it, it's um, commercial Commission. vehicles, it's the worker, the, the, the car born worker, the, the, the rep or the, the, the chap going about his business by car, whereas the, the rest of the, the workers during the day were, were in their factories assembling mm. cars. And therefore at the peak period they'd have to be restrained mm. by some means. Uh, and, and the idea at the time was by car parking restraint, that mm. the factories wouldn't be allowed to have any more yeah, space. There's always been this thing about not, there not being enough that's parking right. in the city centre. That's right. Now we, we had that policy from about 66 until two or three years ago I suppose uh, because there was still the concern that, that the, the increase in cars would, would, would submerge the city in uh, 
cause great congestion. Uh, the, the other key to the policy, of course, w w was improved public transport. Mm -hmm. And when the city ran the buses, and, and then for the last uh, 12 years, when the county council or the PTU have, have run the buses, there was um, a policy of subsidy, mm -hmm. which you could tie in with your policy of car restraint to, to make the, the bus Trans attractive as, as, as well as dri driving them off, off, off the car. Now, um, that with the deregulation of uh, buses, mm. the PTE can only run services that, that make a profit. The joint board tenders uh, for services it wants running that it will pay for. Yeah. But the, I think the overall effect is, is, is that you've lost control of public transport as one of the keys of a transport policy. That's sort of digressing from the... Uh, well, it's connected with... From, from where we started, that, that, so in the end, in 1966, we produced a plan that was going to be finished in 1981 of roads like the North-South Road, the East-West, uh, and, and so forth. Um, well, it's now 1986, and all we've produced is the Stichel Chelsmore bypass and the um, Allied Way, the Interdistrict Link in, 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 in Binley. And fortunately, or unfortunately for the city, as well as fortunately for us, the traffic flow hasn't quite materialised. Mm. The employment, one of the other key factors in the, in the early planning, was the employment in the city was, was predicted to increase by about 25%. Mm. Well, instead it, it stayed static and is now decreasing. Deep, well, it's 13% unemployed. Uh, there's, there's a lot less, uh, and, and that has saved us <coughs> from. Uh, terrible congestion, I'll say the city from terrible congestion. I think there's, car, car ownership is inevitable, it, keep, it does keep marching on, it might get hiccups, but it eventually gets back on the path again, and the, there will still come the time when uh, the, the, the city is, is having problems. Mm. And we're in a different uh, atmosphere now to what we were in the late 60s and early 70s. We were certainly spending a lot of money on roads. Mm. We're not now. We're spending a lot less now than, than, than we were then. And on, on many other council services because of the, um, of the government's attitude to public expenditure. But uh, we're trying very hard to make people realise that, that roads are so important to the economy of the city. Mm. That, that if you use your money on, on what you might consider necessary uh, social s support. It, it's a, it is a bit like eating your seed corn, that, that you can only use it once mm. on, on giving grants to you guys. But if, if you give the... Uh, <laughs> if, 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 if you use it to build a road which creates jobs, which brings in people who buy houses mm. and pay rates every year, that, then, then it's, it's, a, it's an investment that the city really can't afford not to make. Yeah. And uh, what, what a, a big change from when we dreamt up these roads is, is the, the switching emphasis of, of why they're needed. That when we designed, or first designed the Fosal Holbrook bypass and put it in the plans 20 years ago, it was for congestion and delay. That it, it, it was to improve the environment of Foles Hill. Mm. It was to get the traffic away from, from the residential areas and the shopping areas. Uh, now, uh, the big emphasis for the Fosal Holbrook bypass, which is still our top priority, is, is that it's going to bring jobs. It is going to we release industrial sites. Yeah. Yes. It's going to release the, the gasworks site and the, the old courthouse green Morris Engines site, uh, and so on. Mm. Uh, and so, so it's always the same with roads. The, the, the need and the priority always stay the same, but your your justifications change. Your emphasis changes. It, the, the best roads still come out best as, as the ones that are going to do the most to, to meet the objectives that, that you've got in hand, but your objectives change. Can we talk about one of the last roads to be pedestrianised, Hartford Street? That was 1971. Um, that was in addition to the precinct? That's yes, well the, the precinct was almost purpose built as, as pedestrianised. It, it wasn't quite, uh, and um, Smithford Way and Market Way are the width they are because they were actually built as roads. Traffic never ran on them, but they, they were the built as roads. This is where I said earlier the uh, the engineer and the architect not agreeing with with each other, and possibly the city fathers having cold feet as well. Um, and if if you know the the ramp that goes up to the car park above the market, yeah. Well, next time you're coming down that ramp, 
look where you would end up if, if you didn't take that funny sharp left at the bottom. You would end up in, in Market Way in front of uh, Woolworths, which is where it was planned to, planned to go. Uh, so, the, so the precinct was almost purpose built as pedestrianised. Hartford Street was um, a very busy street, uh, as, as was Broadgate. And I think, I think, was it George III who either had it built or, or, it, or it was, it was no. built in honour or something? He, I, I, I've, I've seen the old pictures um, of, of him coming into Coventry in his coach up Harper Street. I'm not sure whether it was, was built because he was coming or, or built as a celebration of, of, uh, after, after he'd been the first time. Uh, so it's been there 300 years or so yes. uh, as, as a, a main route into the city centre. But what, one of the, the, the roads we haven't mentioned is the inner circulatory. Mm. That uh, is, is the ring road within the ring road and was meant to, is meant to carry the service vehicles, the cars, to the car parks and, and the buses, yeah. but isn't really meant for through traffic. So there, uh, the, there was old bits of it that were built sort of in the 30s, Corporation Street, Queen Victoria Road, uh, but in, in the 60s, new bits were built like Greyfriars Road, New Union Street, there used to be a Union Street which, which was very zigzaggy and uh, went past the old um, register office and that was straightened out. Little Park Street built, um, Fairfax Street built a link, link across past Poor Meadow so that when we ended up with that total ring uh, around, inside the inner ring mm. but around the shops there was, there was no need or less need for the through route through Broadgate. Mm. And uh, the, the, the aim was to, to both uh, reduce the traffic, almost pedestrianise it, but, but I think everyone accepted that buses had to continue going to Broadgate because that's where, that's where the people on the buses wanted to be. They wanted to be close to the shops, not walking a quarter of a mile from Pearl Meadow. Uh, and the thoughts were that um, we could take action Firstly, in Broadgate, which is what, what we did, but that uh, with the development that was going on in Hartford Street, one could take. The, the, well, there 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 was um, opportunity to to provide the underpass to the Barracks car park, yeah. but only if you took um, change the levels in, in in Hartford Street, and all the stuff on the the side nearest the barracks car park was 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 to be redeveloped. Uh, that was that was done um, in partnership with with a private development company. And uh, I don't know quite how the idea developed, but uh, given the opportunity to get the the access to the car park, given the fact it was all being rebuilt, uh, the particular HMV setup where where they had a cinema upstairs, a shop at ground floor, and then a, what was a beer keller. At basement level, dog and trumpet, um, yeah. or dog and trumpet. Uh, the, yes, the, unfortunately, they opened the beer killer shortly before the Irish had their bombs campaign. Remember, there was a bomb blast yeah. in Birmingham, yeah. and oh, there was a couple of bombs in Coventry, and, and the bottom fell out of their trade overnight. That nobody was going to go down in a, a beer killer when when there was the risk of it being blown up. Mm. So they they closed it down. They don't need back as the dog and trumpet. Anyway, with that development going on on that side, um, and and the the desire to to uh, get that underpass through to the barracks car park, it, it needed the levels we've now got in Hartford Street, and with those levels, there's no way you could keep traffic in Hartford Street. Now, whether development begat pedestrianisation or pedestrianisation was a good idea in its own right, uh, you can never really be sure in these things because they tend to develop and gel over the years when, when people are talking about things. I think certainly it's it's successful, it's new development on one side and, and the old development having access behind it on the other side, but, but uh, you could service it from behind, so so it was easy to pedestrianise. Great, I think we've got enough now, do you think, Dave? Um, maybe we've got a good idea, because if you actually talk about what your job involves, then personally, what, you know, what, you, what you do from day to day, because I, I think that would be quite useful. Mm. What I, what I do or what I did? <laughs> <laughs>
Is that because uh, I, I've been involved in in a lot of the planning over the years. I, I came 23 years ago as a graduate trainee, and eventually ended up in uh, at the end of a graduate training in the office, the design office, where they were they were designing um, stage five of the inner ring road, which um, is the White Friars to Palmetto bit. So I, I worked on the design of that, and you might notice that most of it's curved and it's built on um, it's built on pre-stressed beams which every one is a different length and each, each right? end of it was every end was it was a different angle as well yeah. and I wrote a computer program to calculate the, the, the length and the angle of the beams which which was coming in more about 1966, so that, that was that was a long time ago. Certainly these days there'd be no problem, but in those days it took some it's took some right. writing. And I then uh, switched into traffic engineering for a short spell, but I, I was still short of uh, site experience for my professional qualification. Mm -hmm. So I then went out on site with the same scheme that that I'd been designing, which which was nice to have the continuity uh, of seeing something that helped design get onto site. And then even better was when I went back into the office, the, the scheme was still being built for another year after I'd gone back into the office, I then was involved with all the traffic management measures that would be implemented when the scheme was opened. So all that stuff up Far Gosford Street with Vecaray Street and uh, Bramble Street with the no right turns and, and all that stuff, it's I was involved with all of that as well. So I, I really saw, I'm very lucky to have been with a scheme from from more start to to finish, from start of design to um, opening it. Uh, I've mainly been involved in uh, traffic and transportation, but for the last few years I've been responsible for the drainage side, the direct labour on the highway side, the road maintenance and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we have road safety, land survey, quite a mixed bag. And, and the other one that, that causes me a lot of, uh, well, uses a lot of my time is, is car parks. I, I, I'm yeah. responsible for running the car parks. Because you know when there's a building comes vacant in the city centre, it's going to end up as a car park sooner or later before it gets redeveloped. Well, that would be nice if you could, but usually we find that any building that becomes vacant becomes a social services property. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that's funny. I always make a bid for it, yeah. yeah so well, I didn't, any, didn't know that. Any surplus building, social services makes a bid for it. Uh, I presume you're, you're alluding to the drill hall car park. Well, that, that's, well, I mean, I'm not just that, but there's, there's the old garage on uh, Arlingham Road, that's not a car park. Well, that's, yeah, that's private. Uh, that's National Car Parks so, have um, just approached whoever, the owners, mm. uh, taken it off and knocked it down and, and used it as a car park. That's, that's, that's private enterprise speculating on... on the use of a bit of land until <coughs> it does become something else. It's it's something they can do, and, and, and we find it difficult to do because well, so as behind the car behind the Belgrade, that car park there that's been developed recently, the pub in the middle of it. The, we've reduced the size of the car. Yes, the, the, we've just built, built some shelved housing on, 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 on the car park. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we're difficult with with uh, doing what national car parks doing because. With a virtual monopoly in the city centre, and not all the space is full, it's difficult to justify spending money on producing another car park mm. if there's empty space elsewhere. Because what we would probably be doing is redistributing our di existing customers at greater expense to us. NCP can come in and and open a car park, and they're going to win to them new customers. Mm. So so it's bound to be worthwhile for them and they pinch some of our customers. Yeah, to me there seems to be an amazing amount of it, almost a large part of the city centres. We haven't got enough. We haven't got we haven't enough. enough. Um, not in the right place. I, I think uh, we've probably got the right number in total because we don't get full. Mm. Uh, what we find is, is that the outer car parks or intermediate car parks are, are nearly full during the week with, with the worker but the two shoppers car parks in the middle have space in them. But come Friday and Saturday, the shoppers car parks are, are, are full, particularly Saturday, uh, and people will queue at them. They won't go and drive to 
an empty car park ten minutes away, they, they sit in a queue. This is one of the things that is bothering our mind at the moment, that if the compulsory purchase order in Smithford Way is successful, then Burton's are starting to build a Debenham store next yeah, spring on, the, on right. the site of the West Orchard car park. Yes, they're going to demolish one of the 1951 buildings, aren't they? To what we built around that era, in that style, to make way for it, aren't they? The ones with uh, uh, Davies in it. Yeah, that's right. That whole that whole rank of shops from uh, Boots to Marks and Spencers come yeah. down, and the car park behind it. Uh, we are losing 800 spaces there. And it's full every Saturday. People queue there to go there. So we're, we're busily searching for alternative sites that will keep going during the two years. But it's not they're not going to be as convenient. And, uh, we are worried that, that, that it may put people coming or off coming into the city centre, which would be obviously bad. Great. Right. You know? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we talked about what the future holds at all. <laughs> well, and, and that, and the planning for the crystal ball. Yes. So are we going to have the six lane superhighway <laughs> going through the town centre? <laughs> or underneath it? Well, we, we're going to build the Fargosford Street Relief Road because it's desperately that's, needed. that's starting this, this financial year. That, um, by the year end we'll have finished the design and, and got the, the tender documents out. Uh, we won't actually start on site until May 87, but just after the turn of the year people will see all the demolition taking place. This is going past, the, it's going through um, where the old garages is it? Behind yes. um, yeah. But on Lower Forest Street. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it takes, goes through the garage. And then, you know, if you go into All Saints Lane, the two car parks in there, yes. behind Unit Sales, it's yeah. very much on the line of All Saints Lane, come those car parks, because it's, it's, it's a dual carriageway. Yeah, it, it wipes out the car parks, wipes out Unit Sales, clobbers the corner of uh, across the road where the, the white line is. Yeah. Um, now that 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 should start, and, and we're working flat out on that. That should start next uh, May. That's the most major bit of road work it's planned. Well, that's 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 around about five millions, and it's, it's the next one that, that's due in the in late eighty um, eight, November eighty eight, which is the Fosal Holbrooks bypass. Now that's the start of the northern end of the north south that's road. That's through the old um, railway line, is it? Now? Well, not quite. It, it's, it leaves the M6 where the Bedworth Bypass meets the M6 and, and comes down as far as uh, Dunlop Sports Field mm -hmm. and then, but then loops into Holbrooks and comes out near Dunlop on um, Holbrook Lane. It's the next stage after that, the, the north south stage one that takes off from the sports field and follows, then follows the railway line and, and continues all the way down to eventually join the Stanshall Charles Moore Bypass down by the old zoo. Now that that's the biggie, that's that's thirteen million or so. But we're hoping uh, that it's going to be not just eligible but successful in getting European regional development fund money. Mm. Uh, that's that's, that's really market. the key to it, yeah. Um, it, it's certainly looking Favourable. It's just a matter of whether Brussels has got enough money, I think, in, in a particular year. We, we could be fortunate and we could get 50% grant from our government mm. and then f the other 50% from Europe, so, so we could get it for free. That would be rather... Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's our best hope, because <laughs> city, the City Council won't be able to afford 13 million. It's, a it's getting worse and worse, is it, the finance situation? Well, it, it is. We're, we're, we're not sure where we are at the moment with the county council just being abolished. But uh, they, they, the government is, is reducing capital limits all the time. It isn't, ju it isn't just what they, they give us, it's also what they let us spend. The, the, you, you, we aren't masters over what we can spend either, that they limit uh, the amount we can spend. And they're reducing their, their grant support. Well, for capital projects, and then they're, they're all, they've been steadily reducing their rate support grant uh, as well. It, it's come down from about 60% to 47% over the last few years. So that they're, they're secretly cutting back all the time. That's why we've seen so many holes in the road and stuff at the moment. That's part of it, yeah. Although we, we think Coventry's roads aren't, aren't that bad. Um, the county council have done a, a reasonable job. 
but we think we they've only managed to hold the fort over the over the, the their their life that that we should really be putting more money into road maintenance than, than, yeah, than yeah, I've got that impression there. Yeah, you're right. yes, it's, uh, it's 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 not so much the routine stuff as the odd effect that that, that causes the problem like the the very cold uh, february we had yeah. and uh, we're only out now assessing the condition of the road so we haven't really had the feedback the cost you but means. we know what the feedback's going to be yeah the, 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 to catch up with what damage that five week cold spell did will, will be two three four million which we won't have and therefore everything's deteriorated that little bit more now we're, we're, we're trying not to cry wolf all the time because roads just don't collapse overnight they no. just do deteriorate over a period of time but if you continue only doing Cosmetic. Mm. It's, it's a bit like painting rotten woodwork. In the end, you're wasting your time, and, and to some extent, that's what we're doing. We're put, putting a, a f another false veneer on the top when down below it's getting worse and worse. So you've got to spend a lot of money on the ring roads. You know, in, in, we, we've got to. We think we have. We, we don't know the <laughs> we don't know the extent of the problem yet. But the particularly the the section that's elevated over Pool Meadow has got problems in in the joints. Uh, we're not sure quite what the cause is. We, we, th we think it's probably road salt rather than um, chlorides or, or sulfates in the concrete itself. Probably is, is the road salt that's washing through and then causing problems. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay. That'll do. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.